Have you ever felt like you're seeing too many patients and you just can't keep up with your notes? Welcome back to another episode where I help younger physicians decrease stress and increase income by transitioning from corporate to independent practices, even without any business experience. Well, in this episode, you're going to learn details of how my scribe has helped me decrease my stress, benefits of a scribe, and my thoughts on the future of AI in the scribe industry. That's wonderful. So what is, what is a scribe? Uh, for, for those that may not know, and I know that some physicians already have scribes, and, but what, mm-hmm. what, is the, what is the definition of a scribe? So pretty much um, the definition of a scribe is someone that would assist the provider in the documentation of um, kind of what's going on in the visit. Um, I know a lot of providers, their documentation is a lot of templates, or they might take their, their charts home with them and they're not necessarily getting all the details that are going on in the exam. So uh, a scribe is a person that will be in the exam room or be listening to the audio in the exam room and pretty much be being documenting everything in as much detail as possible for the provider on, on the EHR so that um, you'll have accurate notes for billing and have a very good patient history. And so you mentioned... Um either in the room or virtually, uh, or at least, I, uh, you know, they, your company is a virtual scribe company. So mm-hmm. explain what's the difference between a, a virtual scribe and a regular scribe. So yeah, an in-person scribe is someone that actually goes in the room with the provider and will be kind of charting on a computer, listening in real time. So there'll be um, another person in the exam with, room with you um, when you're examining the patient. Um, with a virtual scribe, pretty much um, there's a microphone in the exam room connected to the computer. And um, we use some HIPAA compliant software um, so that the scribes could listen in real time what's going on. Um, Nothing's really being recorded during that time. So the scribes have to be kind of actively listening and they'll document in real time on the chart. Mm -hmm. And so this is something you went to school for and you got an MBA and and developing. (laughs) No, actually, um, I went went to UT Austin. I, I went government route. Uh, I worked in Parliament in London, so I was actually totally opposite to this. But um, one day, my dad came up to Austin for a meeting. Um, he's a physician in um, South Texas Internal Medicine, and I think the the scribing concept first got to him then four years ago. So I think it was still a pretty big concept then in person scribing. And um, I know his documentation style is he takes everything home. He doesn't like um, to be in front of the computer in front of the patient. So. Usually he'll come home and have two to three hours of chart work. I used to be his typist too because he used to use chicken finger typing, one finger typing. So he would dictate and I would go through some of his charts with him um, after school. But um, pretty much that concept came to him and then um, we kind of thought through it. Um, and another side piece of information, my sister actually went to medical school in India um, where most of my scribes are located. So she was during that time, she was studying for her steps. And it usually takes about a year for someone from a foreign medical graduate to study for the step. So she, she was kind of in this transitionary period. So we thought that this would be kind of a good opportunity for people like that, that um, want to learn about how um, medicine is practiced here in the U.S. and want to actually put some of their knowledge to, to use. And we kind of got that idea. And then um, I was on a plane to India um, two months later, halfway through my semester, went all online and um, started it from there. Huh. So, so you went to medical school in India? Is that what, what I, Well, no, like, <laughs> I, I, I didn't go to medical school. My sister went to medical school. I'm surprised she was able to complete it. She's back now practicing. She actually got a nephrology fellowship um, recently. So she, nice. she did um, internal medicine as well. But um, I went to India and uh, I thought I was the first person with this idea, oh, we can get doctors, nurses, or people to do virtual scribing work. And I put out an ad and little did I know there was already companies doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great story. So uh, your father, so did he also, was he in part of starting this company or was De- he? Definitely. He was a um, guinea pig um, to say the least. Um, I didn't have very good um software in the very beginning actually like right now i'm using zoom to connect all the scribes with um their providers they have a great hipaa compliance license um so everything is very um secure and encrypted but back then i didn't know about that so we were testing different softwares and Mm -hmm. it was very cumbersome every time he would go to the exam room he would have to log into something so it definitely took a lot of iterations but um finally i think we've kind of perfected that workflow 
and um it, it's been a great use to him so he's actually had his scribe um she was like actually maybe like our fourth or fifth employee and it's uh, one person he can't let go of um he can't practice without her and we've had other scribes try and he, he just gets upset <laughs> he, he yeah. loves her so so what did you where do, where do you see the industry going cuz obviously you said that people were doing this in 2018 mm-hmm. um i know that there are obviously us based companies as well doing this um i've looked into them i know that you guys had a lot of ad time on facebook i think that's where i may have seen an ad yes. or on in, or social media so so where where do this where do you see this is going so yeah, I think um, the industry has been usually filled with MTs, medical transcriptionists, right? Um, I think previously people would dictate their notes and someone would come back and give them the the paper text of it and then they would put it in the paper chart. So that's kind of evolved now. People um, have been displaced from those types of jobs and now I think scribing other virtual medical assistants, other kind of um, periphery um, ancillary medical service jobs. They're going, um, they have to evolve to get to this. So we have um, people in India, all of these companies actually were probably medical transcription companies established 20 years ago doing this type of work. And now they're quickly evolving, going into virtual scribing, like live scribing with an actual person. There's even some companies, I know Microsoft and uh, Nuance, I think they produce Dragon. They have a big team over there that are trying to perfect their AI. Mm -hmm. So AI scribing, so pretty much they're trying to correct the software so they have people listening in, the software spitting out um, what the charting would look out. And then right now, some scribes are actually correcting those things to, to have the software learn um, and eventually, hopefully, become fully automated so that they don't have to have a person in the room. So that's kind of where the industry is going. Um, I'm a little more pessimistic towards that. I think um, you still need that human touch. And sometimes speaking to your scribe, the scribe going over the previous chart with you, there's other added value other than just the pure documentation. Yeah. So, so from, from my standpoint, I, I know that when one of the, you know, we can talk about the pros and cons, but I think one of the things I've noticed um, as soon as I lost my scribe was that um, patients were able to speak to me more freely when they didn't see another person in the room. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not sure what other physicians are, or seeing or, or or getting from their patients, but uh, by the by the two three minute mark, I find that my patients don't even realize that someone is listening, and and mm-hmm. then they're able to actually speak to me more freely. Is that something that you see also in the industry? Uh, definitely, um, I think that um, that also kind of amplified, I guess, during COVID. You know, when you didn't want to also have an extra person in the room with you, so I think kind of that virtual. Um, um, person there would, would, would help. And, and definitely most of my providers that I, um, that use the service, they actually, they don't usually speak to the scribe in the room. Um, like you, I'm pretty sure you do as well. You speak to your patient whenever you're done speaking to your patient, you could let the patient go and then you could speak to your scribe freely after the visit or, mm-hmm. or something. That's how most of my providers do. So usually, yeah, the patient, they sign that consent form. Um, they are aware that someone is listening in, but it's very, the microphone is not too big. It's not too, um, I guess, cumbersome or it's not yeah. too noticeable. Mm-hmm. So that um, they definitely do um, forget. I used to actually use this other microphone in the past that had a big red light on it. Uh, and I, I had to kind of change that because I felt like um, some providers or it didn't, it didn't feel comfortable for patients. Mm-hmm. So what are other... Um... Negatives that you see in, in um, having the virtual scribe. I know that you know, this is what yeah. you do, but but certain things I look at negatives as maybe things that we can improve on it, and uh, we can kind of look to see how we can make it better for the patient experience. So, yeah, I think some of the negative things is um, there are other ancillary things that people in person can do for the practice, right? Um, maybe when you're um, usually the scribes, they don't fulfill an order. Um, usually they pre fill orders like maybe um, prescriptions or um referrals to other providers but having an in-person staff you usually will have someone that could kind of do that right away so there is a little bit more coordination that needs to happen between the scribe um and the provider and the the clinic so that we can get the patient going um in a faster way but definitely an in-person um someone there actually there would actually fulfill the order and kind of have the patient going right away Mm -hmm. so i think it kind of cuts a little steps if you have someone in person and um but um, in, in regards to, the, I guess, the documentation, um, I feel like um, 
describes themselves. Um, I, I feel like the people that you're also getting in person, they're also, um, they're kind of, you have to look at their job perspective and what, what they're looking to get from their career, right? Most of them are in medical school or trying to get to medical school. So you have a certain knowledge level there. Um, the scribes usually from overseas, this is kind of their career. So mm-hmm. they had to kind of gather a lot of knowledge. Um, they've been maybe in the industry transcriptionist for many years. So they've heard or they've seen how doc, like documentation of charts and how doctors, I guess, lingo um, is. So I think that kind of changes for, with in-person uh, scribing or having a person in person and having a virtual yeah, and I, I, what you're saying uh, about the end of the visit, I think it happens with us in the in the practice because you know we, we're fairly busy in the office and we kind of move patients one after the other. And what I'm finding is that if my scribe is not able to finish the impression and plan, then they're asking, "Well, the patient's ready to be checked out," but the patient's like, "Oh, well, we have lab work that needs to be ordered. We have so there is." There's something that we may have to implement a delay in, mm-hmm. in processes. Maybe even uh, I think we gave her uh, instant messaging on our computer on our EMR system, so she may might be able to communicate with the staff just as though she was there. Yeah. So, so. pretty much, um, like in my dad's clinic, um, what the workaround that we've done, uh, they use ECW. So, what the scribe will do, um, will assign like do an um like assign an action to a, a, an MA that's sitting in the nursing station. And make it urgent so like a notification will pop up on their emr so while the, like he's speaking to the patient maybe ordering uh, or, or like maybe sending a prescription or ordering some um lab that message is already communicated to the ma through the scribe on the back end and then by the time the patient walks out everything should be fulfilled mm-hmm. yeah so definitely there's a lot of workflows that um every practice is unique there's a lot of workflows that um, each practice could adapt, but it definitely wor- it, it helps with communication and um, knowing what the capabilities of what the scribe can do, um, and then just kind of tying all those loose ends together to make sure that the patient's getting the best care. For sure, and uh, I, you know, I think one of the other things is is language. Uh, I've heard uh, doctors say, "Well, suppose a patient speaking another language. I, sp- I speak Spanish. I speak Creole. Some of some of my patients, mm-hmm. and so the scribe doesn't speak that other language. Yeah. So uh, I'm having to translate what I'm." talking Doing, to the yeah. patient about um and i i think it's it, i still think the time spent with the patient uh kind of trumps that that negative in my opinion but i don't know how other providers are so yeah um other spanish-speaking providers one he, he told me the way he, he he likes to do it that saves some time is pretty much he does the whole visit in spanish and then when he's kind of doing the physical exam he lets the patient know that He's going to kind of do a little dictation to the scribe so that they could do the documentation for him. So maybe he's doing some, I'm listening to the lungs and he's kind of just doing a quick summary dictation of what the visit is. And then he'll just continue the whole conversation in Spanish with the patient. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. I I do that a little bit, but uh, something to consider. I mean, I think that also depends on, yeah, how you feel with, how you feel with speaking like that to your patient. I know some providers, I think it's totally normal that they want the patient to kind of leave the exam room and then speak to the scribe more freely to make the patient feel more comfortable because mm-hmm. it is a little awkward than speaking to the computer when you don't see anyone and then the patient might be thinking what's going on. <laughs> yeah. But what about compliance issues? Have you have you had any issues with compliance um, um, in terms of um, the documentation, the, the HIPAA compliance and things of that nature? What have you um, seen? So yeah, we have um, we're pretty compliant. We have um, all HIPAA compliant software, so we do have a BAA signed with Zoom. Um, we do sign BAAs with all our um, clients as well. Um, all our scribes, when they initially join our company, we undergo um, a three month. They undergo a three month training, and in that training, they have to do. Um, we have like a HIPAA awareness course that they have to pass, like a module, mm-hmm. and um, we have little safe. We have on our computers, our company devices, they have safeguards. Um, to make sure there's no screenshotting, none of those things could happen while the scribes are working on our devices. Um, usually, um, there is some problems when we go to bigger clients' hospitals. They'll have to do a lot of security audits. I'm actually going through one right now. So we have multiple meetings with their IT team going through our, how we connect in, all these things. But um, yeah, it, usually it's just a, a long process. But um Luckily, everything's HIPAA compliant and everything. We haven't had any problems um, 
so far. Yeah. Knock on wood. And uh, are you doing any surveys for patients uh, or within the practices that you're 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 providing the services for? Because I just thought about this as I'm as I'm talking to you. You know, what are the, uh, what are the, what are the patients saying? I actually haven't haven't done that. Um, usually, I've just it's been very hard. Usually, I try to send surveys to providers too. Um, none of them answer, so I never really thought to uh, to ask the the patients how how they feel about that because definitely some of them might feel some change. Some of them, I know some providers tell me themselves that they give more of a personal visit. They don't have to sit, spend time on the computer. So definitely patients would acknowledge that and notice that difference. Mm -hmm. So I would be interested probably to see some sort of survey like that to see how patients feel about it. Okay. And I did not get a survey from you. So please. Okay. Uh, I'll send, I'll, <laughs> I think, yeah. So I actually kind of scrapped that when I kept doing it, it was, it was kind of negative. And then my scribe team, they would be like, why is no one giving positive feedback or any feedback to us? Are we doing good? So I was like, yeah, let's just hold off on this for a while. Yeah. So so I have to give a disclaimer because I, I probably didn't give a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Uh, VB Scribe is my scribe company after I lost my my uh, live scribe. And like I, like I've I can tell everyone that I that I coach or that I help, I'm looking to help physicians decrease stress, increase revenue. Uh, so if we can have them do something for their practices that allows them to, f to free their time up so that they can care for the patients more powerfully, that's what we're trying to do. And so my idea is to bring in my or our ecosystem of providers, of uh, wise counsel, of uh, people who can help a physician really practice impossible, right? Because that's what we try to do. We try to help them understand things that they can do that they certainly weren't taught in medical school because I did. I was not taught about scribes in medical school. So, um, so where do we find you? Where, uh, where um, can we find you if we wanted to to learn more about your services? Yeah, you could find me on my website. It's uh, VP Scribe. So V as in Victor, P as in Paul, and scribe.com. Um, BP scribes as well dot com. You could search us on Facebook. Um, we have our um, company page there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, you can once you look on our page, you could pretty much put your information there, and you could schedule a meeting with me to see how um, scribing services could work for your practice. And we'll have some. We'll have the links uh, to the to your websites as well. And I think there there is a at least I. I don't know if you're still offering it, but I'm going to throw it out there. But you you gave us a we two do. week we, two week yeah. con free consultation or free scribe services uh, for providers, and that was really that was really the key to me converting because it was either I continued the way I was doing things three years ago and seeing you know fifteen twenty patients managed care difficult patients um, by myself and finishing my notes or hiring a, another uh, company mm -hmm. that can help me do that. So uh, one one thing, uh, one question I, I like to ask uh, my uh, guests is uh, it's related to the one thing by Gary Keller. He, he wrote a book called The One Thing, and it's what the what's the one thing you can do such that by doing it, it makes everything else easier or necessary. But I'm going to change it around a little bit and ask you, what's the one thing you wish that your that you could change about your father's practice right now? Um, I think I kind of alluded to this earlier. Um. Right now, it's very difficult for his uh, him to live a day without a scribe. Um, he's so so very reliant on it. Um, that scribe, I feel a little bad for her. She got married during these three years, and not very much vacation time. I could tell. Um, so I mean, I think um, he he works usually four and a half days a week. Um, so I think he needs to lighten his schedule a little bit more. Um, my brother actually just joined his practice and. Um, he was telling me he's complaining. Um, it's, he's just six months in that he's already having a full schedule. He's like needs an NP already. So he's like, I see my my colleagues, my classmates just starting in other in other clinics, and they just see maybe five, ten patients a day. And he's already at twenty five to thirty. So he's he's stressing out too. <laughs> um, so um, definitely love to help them out with the scribing service. But um, yeah, I mean they're they're too busy. They're too busy people. Um, their scribes are now kind of integrated in their lives. So now whenever my dad's taking vacation, he'll let his scribe know, yeah, I'm for July 4th, I'm going here. Plan your vacation accordingly. <laughs> um, so pretty much it's it's hard. I've been trying to pair other people, have backup scribes for him, but 
him and his scribe have um, a good chemistry and, and she knows kind of what he means by when he's talking to the patient and what he's mm-hmm. looking for. So yeah. they have that kind of uh, that same wavelength. So it's yeah, hard to yeah. kind of change that. <laughs> well, it's uh, all about establishing a relationship, right? So he's yeah. got a great relationship with his scribe and that's kind of, that, that goes a long way in, in practicing medicine. So. Yeah, maybe hopefully his office staff, his MAs could do a little bit more to this guy. <laughs> so there you have it. That's a conversation from uh, 2022. And uh, I'm still using VP Scribes at this time. Uh, I'm not an affiliate, so there is no, there is no uh, affiliate uh, arrangement. I just wanted to share that, uh, uh, share something that's been, that I've been doing in my practice has helped me tremendously. And there's two schools of thought on Scribes. There's a, uh, Actually, maybe now there's three schools of thought. There's an in-person scribe uh, where the person sits in the room with you and uh, uh, documents everything that you say and uh, creates a note, um, which I think is really expensive these days and difficult to find. And then the, the second school of thought is virtual scribes. And you can have virtual scribes that, uh, that are in country or they're offshore and uh, VP scribe does use offshore resources. And as you heard, uh, many of the resources that they use are well-educated resources that, uh, that are able to understand the lingo and are able to understand documentation and uh, it's worked well for me. But what about AI? What about uh, artificial intelligence? So I've done some research on that and I, and I did some digging and there are tons of companies uh, popping up. And uh, I use ChatGPT for s- some things um, in the podcast world, as well as, uh, you know, my brother told me that he actually used uh, ChatGPT to, to write a review for an employee, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. So he, he in- entered uh, some prompts and was able to have his employee review or reference generated in chat GPT. And I, and I think that that's fascinating because it, it's, a, it's a big time saver for things that may be a little bit mundane and time consuming for, for uh, business owners or people in the business world. But in healthcare, how would that work? So the companies that I research uh, charge a monthly fee and they require that the physician actually uses their phone or recording device during the visit. That recording device then is hooked up, I guess, to their servers and, and, and their AI software. That AI software is connected to the web and um, it spits out uh, a document that is uh, templated on a web page. And depending on your EHR system and depending on the AI software company, that template will then get transferred or integrated with the EHR. At least that's what I understand. I don't use the software, so I'm not sure uh, if yeah, how the integration works. But the, the thing that came to mind when I was looking at uh, these softwares is number one, cost. Yes, there, there's a fixed cost to it, but are they going to upcharge you for additional patients that you see? Um, I'm not sure how that works. Is there a cost to integrate with the EHR? Pricing was definitely not transparent on many of the sites. Some of them saying that uh, they, in, if you if you have more than a certain number of patients or a certain number of hours, you have to contact them for pricing. So that wasn't as transparent as I would have hoped that it would have been. But one of the biggest d- uh, downsides, I think, of AI uh, is the fact that you still have to review the note. So the notes are generated by the computer and you have to hope that that is um, generated to your liking. So there's a lot of review that I think would have to happen. And it, it almost seems as though it's like a glorified transcription service through the computer. And if you know anything about medical legal issues, you know that if that computer does not generate the right note or doesn't, um, doesn't document or order tests uh, or or uh, transcribe things correctly, and that becomes part of the medical document, and uh, it's a legal document. So can you sue the AI company? Can you sue the AI software? Mm, I'm not sure how that would work. So that is one of the biggest downfalls, I think. Uh, as far as having an in-person scribe, I 
have trained that scribe and have been working with the scribe pretty much every day to have them document the notes the way I want them documented. And uh, yes, there is a review process at the end, but um, it's a live review. I feel that if you're using an AI software and you see that there is a mistake, then you're going to have to go back and type or correct those mistakes as opposed to dictating those corrections to your scribe. So that's my take on AI scribing. Now, I might be crazy. You might think I'm crazy for thinking that AI is not going to take over the medical transcription uh, business. And uh, that may be true, but I, I think the, that most physicians, at least the physicians that I've spoken to, uh, they want that, that touch, that um, personal touch when um, documenting and, um, and dealing with patient um, information. And I certainly would not want my information uh, recorded uh, on a phone and transmitted uh, on the web because, you know, there, there's going to be some security risks uh, associated with that. So that's my take on AI scribes. And uh, I hope that you will take some of this information and do your own research and understand how a scribe can help you decrease your stress and uh, improve your documentation. Thanks for listening. And if you want to get alerts when new episodes are released, don't forget to subscribe or follow this podcast on your favorite podcast app.